Joseph says, if money fail. And notice that verse 15 there says, when money failed. And notice he, that when the people speak to Joseph, they say, the money faileth. What does that mean? It means they don't have any more. What's the very first thing we do when we have a problem? We pull out our God, don't we? We pull out our God and we say, take care of it. Take care of it. Here, I, I'll, I've got it right here. I've got, I've got it. Take, take care of it. You take care of that problem. And we throw our money at the problem. Never ask the Lord one time about the problem. Because we don't need to. Because here's our God. And it will take care of whatever problem we need. Until it's empty. Until it's empty. You know what the book of Proverbs says? The book of Proverbs says money has a way of, or wealth, riches, have a way of making wings. Making itself wings and flying away like an eagle. That's Proverbs chapter 23 verse 5. Money has a way of making wings and flying away like an eagle. Of course it does. Money always fails. Money always fails. But guess what? The bread stored up by the plan of heaven never runs out. Ever runs out. And so the people come to Joseph and they say, Our money has failed. What are we going to do? That's exactly how we respond. I can't do it anymore because my God has failed me. My money has run out. That's how we act. We're just like the Egyptians. We have our money. And we think that our money is going to take care of our problem. But the problem in this case is so humongous. Or to use a word that is really not a word. So ginormous. That it's beyond my ability and the ability of my God that I carry around in my back pocket to take care of it. Because this is not God at all. My money can't do it. And the people came and said, we've run out. The money fails. Of course, the money always fails. And I wonder if in all of this, the Lord wasn't trying to teach Joseph and the Hebrews and the Egyptians and everybody else this lesson. Money always fails. God's plan never fails. But here's what we do. This is what we do. We try to negotiate. Negotiate. Let me say it right. We try to negotiate with the Lord, don't we? And we say to him, we say to him, okay, here's what, here's what I'm willing to do. I'm willing to give you this if you'll give me that. And so we negotiate a works treaty with God. We say, you know what, I'll do X, Y, and maybe Z if you will give me A, B, and possibly C. And so we try to negotiate with what we have, thinking that the Lord wants what we have. He knows this is going to run out. And he knows he has more than we could ever possibly need. And he wants us to get to the end of this. He wants this to disappear. So that we come back to him and say, I am still in need. And what else can I do? Wait a minute. I know what I can do. Let's go back a little bit further in history now. And let's go back to the old barter system. I tell you what. We've got cattle. Huh? How about this? We'll give you our cattle. Joseph says, well, if you give me your cattle, I'll give you bread for your cattle. There in verse 16. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. Notice what they give him. They give him horses and flocks and their cattle of the herds and their asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. Horses, flocks, cattle of the herds, and asses. Now, if I am an agricultural society... And the majority of my people live on land that's producing grain and all the necessities that I need to feed my country and to export from my country. I'm going to have to have horses and I'm going to have to have cattle and I'm going to have to have flocks and I'm going to have to have asses because those are the engines that make the agriculture go. 
Without them, there's no agriculture. But the people are saying to themselves, what good's my horse going to do me if I die? My land's not producing anyway. That horse is going to die because I can't even feed the horse. There's no grass in the meadow for the horse to graze on. There's no grass in the meadow for the cattle to graze on. There's nothing green anywhere. They're going to die anyway. So here, I've got this property, take it. And so they give up all that they have as far as the cattle that they owned, and that is all the livestock they had. And notice at the end of verse 17, it says, he fed them for all their cattle for one year. That's all it lasted was a year. When they ran out of money, they came back and said, why should we die in your presence? You're going to have to still feed us. Here, we'll give you our cattle. So they're still trying to make an exchange with the plan of heaven. They're still trying to give him something for the bread. And it only lasted a year. See, the futility of our efforts are so vain and so empty and so weak that even all that property of livestock is consumed in 12 months. So we come to the end of that year in verse 18. And when that year year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said, We will not hide it from my Lord. How that our money is spent, my Lord also hath our herds and cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our land. See, this is the last thing. This is real property that they're giving away. Their property and themselves. Now, this is where grace always wants to take us. Grace always wants to take us to this spot where we stop depending on the God in our pocket, when we stop depending on all that we have, when we stop depending on all that we own, and we start depending on the plan of heaven. Property had failed. Money had failed. Of course it had. It always does. So they said, how about this? We've reached the end, and we're going to die. Just take us. Just take us. Verse 19. Wherefore shall we die in thine eyes, both we and and our land, buy our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. Give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. Notice how different this is from verse 15. For in verse 15, the people come to Joseph and they say, Well, why should we die in thy presence? The money faileth. Now it's not just them dying, but they're worried about the land. They say, Our land is going to die. Look at that in verse uh, 19. Give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. They must have been approaching the end of the seven years of famine. And they knew that according to the prophecy, according to the dream and the interpretation, at the end of that seven years, there was going to be a change. And they needed some way to be able to make it after that. And so they're going to have to have bread during that first year after the drought ends, and then maybe not after that, because then they can produce for themselves. And can you imagine how bad this must have been in Egypt? Because in Egypt, they depended on the inundation of the Nile every year to flood their properties, to flood all the surrounding land around the Nile River, and then the floods would recede, and the Nile would deposit all that beautiful silt on the lands and would moisten all that soil and they would plant and they would irrigate out of the Nile and they would irrigate out of the ponds that were created from the yearly floods and so forth. And they had water, abundance of water. Now it's so bad, the Nile's not flooding and the Nile has probably dropped to levels that they had never seen. And there's no way to get down there to it, to get the water so that they could live, so that they could irrigate. There's not enough water to put in a teacup. But now they're expecting the Nile to fill back up. And of course it did. It filled back up and the annual inundation of the Nile began again. No rain, no floods, none of that water was happening. And so the people said, we need seed because it's going to happen again. Now they're starting to look forward to the end of the famine. And now they've sold their bodies and their properties to Joseph. So what does Joseph do? 
Verse 20, he bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For the Egyptians sold every man his field because the famine prevailed over them, so the land became, became Pharaoh's. Verse 21, and as for the people, he removed them to the cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other thereof. So they belong to the king now. And so uh, Joseph, not only is he over the administration of all this grain, but he's over the administration of all these people. And he moves them out of their homes. And what does he do? He puts them in the cities because that's where the grain is being stored. So he puts them closer to the storage so that the distribution network is not so grand. Because that's still part of the plan. He moves them closer to the place where the blessing is. And then notice verse 23. Joseph said to the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. You see, this is the plan of redemption. The buyback program, if you will. He buys us for himself. And what was the price that he paid? The price that he paid was his son on a cross for my sin. His son on a cross for your sin. His son on a cross for your sin. He died for us in our place, took our sin and purchased us for himself. Now the Egyptian people come to the place where they say, we're yours, take us. And this is exactly where Grace wanted to get them from the very start, to depend on heaven's plan. And as I said at the beginning, there is probably someone near you, someone in your family, someone at your work, someone in your neighborhood, someone at the marketplace where you go. You see them every week. You know them by name. They say, hey, when you come in the door. And you know they're struggling. You know they're under famine right now. They need to hear the message of redemption. You don't have to negotiate any longer. Trying to do it yourself. Trust Jesus and give him your whole person. And he'll provide for you. And notice what happens. Joseph says, I bought you this day and your land for favor. Lo, here's seed for you. And you shall sow the land, and it shall come to pass in the increase that you shall give the fifth part to Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own. And notice the four parts, seed for the field, your food, the food of your household, and food for your little ones. So everything now is taken care of. The people wait for the famine to end, but they're under the protection now of Joseph, just like Israel is under the protection of Joseph. And they don't have to worry about going to him every year now and trying to negotiate a deal for food. Because heaven made a way and the only price acceptable to God is your heart. That's it. Give him your whole self. Give him your money. Give him your property. Give him everything. It all belongs to him anyway. And just come to him in faith and say, I'm yours. Please take me. Take me and remake me. Make me that new creation in Christ Jesus that you promised. That's what he wants. That's what Joseph provides for these people. You're, not, you're Pharaoh's now. You will serve him. I think we could change this passage from a Christian perspective and say, you belong to Jesus now. Serve him. And he'll provide for you. Oh, he'll take care of your every need. The seed that you need to sow your land, he'll give it to you. The food that you need to feed your family, he'll give it to you. He's going to bless you spiritually. He's going to bless you in every way possible. But the most important way is to make you a child of the king. To make you a son or daughter of God. All of your households. For food for your little ones. And notice what they said. And this is the most beautiful passage. This is the most beautiful part of the passage. They said, you have saved our lives. Hallelujah. That's what I say to Jesus. You have saved my life. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord. And we will be Pharaoh's servants. There it is. You see, the people said, that's it. You have done for us what we could not do for ourselves. Heaven's plan made a way for me. Glory to God. I will be the servant of Jesus Christ. You see, that's the work of God. In the life of people ages ago. And it's still the work of God in the life of people today. 
He still wants to make a way for you and provide for you.